the psychology behind the new Spongebob. Surely we have all come to greatly acknowledge how our childhood heroes, so to say, has merely changed over the past years. After the series became a worldwide success amongst the media industry on May 1st, 1999, many have sought out the entertainment from the Spongebob series. When most of us engage in the brief act of watching television, many of us seek out a certain sense of pleasure, thus ultimately revealing that we desire concepts to remember, and thus the term nostalgia. Throughout these sentimental moments of remembrance, however, things, well, <laughs> do change, such as our favorite childhood heroes. Since more than 90% of humans listen in order to be entertained, some of us fail to recognize the more deeper meanings and other enigmatic concepts that may generally be interpreted as uh, insane, perhaps. We all know SpongeBob has changed throughout the years, especially adding the obscure episodes that have been released after the first movie, such as Face Freeze. Yes, the ones with the perverted art where SpongeBob and Patrick engage in creating ambiguous facial structures. What has happened? Well, after December 23rd, 2004, well, which remained the day where the first SquarePants movie was installed, the SpongeBob franchise seemed to have deteriorated. After season 3, the viewers' ratings for Nickelodeon's most powerful show has fallen 19%. Surely this may seem an odd value, but that is approximately 1.7 million people who fail to sustain their entertainment or care with the new Spongebob. Sensibly, most of us agree that these episodes seem perverted, or even rather depraved. Especially acknowledging how in House Fancy Squidward's toe was briefly dismembered from his body. And indubitably, it is very graphic as you may see here. But then again, what do you think? Let's start with the character development. Spongebob. Spongebob has always been the mature child of the show, who merely seeks out to gain a sense of success, especially noting how he treats others around him, and how he always desired his boating license. <laughs> Take Band Geeks, for example, episode 15, season 2. Squidward faces his most desperate hour after his fellow band acquaintances have tremendously turned against each other, thus ultimately leading to a violent act, hence leaving Squidward betrayed and despondent. It was at that particular moment when Spongebob realizes that, throughout the solemn act of resurrecting Squidward's spirit, this was a sole mistake. He hence briefly motivates the peers to displace their differences and reunite once more. After all, this was for their friend, Squidward Tentacles. Not unlike today's episodes where Spongebob rather compulsively tortures him with a perhaps passive-aggressive manner. In this particular clip, you can see how there may be some truth behind this. Here, we see how Squidward attempts to change his facial features through the excessive act of establishing physical pain. By the aid of Spongebob, who sustains the abuse via hand, surely this may not seem very plausible, but still, if the little sponge continued this act, could he have perhaps discovered some pleasure doing so, ultimately revealing senses of a psychotic nature? Hence the compulsive ladder, as we know as... There he go. <laughs> I mean, surely this humor may remain rather different, but it does not seem to justify nor even entertain the viewer's interest at all. Plankton and Crabs Surely they have been arch nemesis form from the start, but deep down their soul consciousness, they acknowledge their care for each other. This was demonstrated in Best Frenemies, where they both briefly engaged in establishing their own formula. After an outside threat has corrupted their, both of their restaurants, amidst their revealing hatred, they alas discovered a way to accompany each other, thus sustaining at least a sense of care and perhaps love, you be the judge of that. 
but that was soon drowned by the brave powers of greed, where Mr. Krabs ultimately decides to frighten him so much, where he discovers no sheer courage to step another foot outside of his home. You know this episode where Plankton sustains a phobia against whales, and Krabs thus tortures him this way, ultimately shrouding himself to be his daughter, Pearl. Although his phobia of whales may remain rather ambiguous, you can still feast your conscious mind of this obscurity. You can see here, Plankton endured great pain, whilst Krabs merely bathed in his own laughter after deploying a smile between the crimson masses of his cheeks. He discovered pleasure. Psychotic much? <laughs> whilst living with his slightly miffed computer wife, Plankton tolerated many failures of his life, which was not only inflicted by Krabs' greed, but also his own complications of life. Sound familiar? More than 70% of American employees hate their jobs in the United States. Most of us thus develop psychological and mental disorders amidst our perplexed mind. Whilst the rapacious politicians still sustain their wealth, ultimately separating the rich from the poor, as you can see in this demonstration. These examples are also known as the Matthew Effect, introduced by the famous sociologist Karl Marx of Germany in the late 1980s, stating that when the people become richer and the poor become, well, poorer, conflict would remain inevitable. Surely this may not even at all signify Spongebob's fame, but you must understand that there are many concepts of art that convey today's world problems such as these. But then again, what do you think? There are many characters who endure great dysfunction, such as Patrick who remains to be a bully for Squidward as well as Spongebob in some cases. It's very depraved, but then again, Spongebob has changed. <laughs>